Would you like to see a shortcut to help you understand double negation, not not, in intuitionistic logic? Let's take a look. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to The Attic. I'm Mark Jago. I know some terrible jokes. Would you like to hear a not not joke? Classical logic. In intuitionistic logic, negation works in a different way than it does in classical logic. In classical logic, we can go from not not A to A, double negation elimination. We can't do that in intuitionistic logic. Negation means something different in intuitionistic logic than it does in classical logic. And that means we can't cancel out double negations. Negation is pretty difficult to understand in intuitionistic logic, particularly if we're thinking through the semantic clauses. I covered that in the video on semantics and models for intuitionistic logic. And what a lot of people have said to me is that, you know, negation one on its own is difficult enough to understand. Well, we've got two negations in a row, not not a that's really difficult to work through on a model, OK, given that we can't just treat that as meaning the same thing as A on its own. So how can we understand double negation, not not A, in intuitionistic logic? OK, so I've got a shortcut that's going to help you understand the semantics for not not A on intuitionistic models. If you're finding these videos useful, if they're interesting, why not subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon to get updates. OK, so we're thinking about not not P. That means you never get not P. So we're going to be thinking a little bit about why would you never get not P? We'll do that in a sec. Let's just try working it out straightforwardly bit by bit. Where do you never get not P? Here is the model that we're going to be looking at. Well, there's only one not P here. OK, so you won't get not not P at state four but you do at state five, you do at state three, and you do at state one. You don't at state zero and state two, because from here you can get to state four. And there you've got not P, so you don't have not not P. OK, so states one, three and five, here, here and here, that's where we're going to get not not P. Just thinking about why that is gives us a kind of a clue, a shortcut for how we can deal with not not P in a slightly easier way. Just look at this branch here, OK? That's the one where in none of these we got not not P. And if we look at this branch, it's a branch where P never crops up at all. So because P never crops up on this branch, we've got not P at the top. And because we've got not P at the top, that basically blocks not not P. So a not P here stops you from having not not P in any of these. So these states can't have it, but all the other ones do have not not P. So there's the hint of the shortcut. Not not P means we never get to not P. And that's going to be the case when everywhere up above you, you can eventually get to P. OK, so a different way of saying not not P for understanding it in a model would be everywhere you can get to, you get to P eventually. You might not get there straight away or in one step or in two steps, but everywhere above, eventually you will get to P, like in this model. So where would you not get not not P? Well, something like this, a model where maybe going one way you get P, but going the other way you don't ever get P. So you would have not P there and that would stop you from having not not P down there. OK, so there's your shortcut for not not P. Think of it as saying everywhere you can get to, you eventually get P. OK, so there you have my shortcut for understanding double negation, not not A in intuitionistic logic. So if you're finding these videos helpful, why not subscribe to the channel? Hit that bell icon to get updates. Leave me a comment down below. Ask me a question. There's no such thing as bad questions on this channel. Thank you so much for watching this far and I hope to see you back soon.